Okay, so, for so sure. Quiet. No, I got you. Boom. Uh, Sorry, my stupid thing there it is. All right, record is good. All right. You got a good shot here? Mm -hmm. You're clear? Good. Yeah, you got it down. Good shot. Sorry, I'm a little raspy. I smoked too many blunts in Africa last week. Get it going? Yep. Cool. Rohan, uh, pleasure. Thanks for having me out to check out the farm. I super appreciate you guys. Uh, would love to kind of, I know you've, been, you know you've been dabbling in the cannabis scene for a bit. Yes. We'll get into that. Let's start with Lion Order uh, and kind of work our way around and kind of get uh, and listen, hear your experiences from past in the past and what you're bringing into Michigan right now. Yeah. Sound good to you? Yeah, man. So uh, when did you initially, uh, you know, decide you wanted to take things in this new direction with Lion Order? You know, um, after the years of being an entrepreneur, you know, mm -hmm. and wanting to do things my way, which is things I love, you know, being a part of something that's m more than just cannabis, being a part of a movement, you know, and that movement is line order and just the philosophy of Rastafari eye and, and these things, you know. So what I mean by being an entrepreneur, I figure since cannabis is also from the garden, you know, such as coffee or any other fruit or beverage or any other thing you can think of, I figure why not um, create something that I want to smoke and something I want to share with my brothers, you know, strains I love, flavors I love, the notes, because, you know, coming from the farming industry or say coffee industry, I develop a likeness to taste and profile, taste profile, and certain notes, you know, because if you know, just like wine or anything else, they have a lot of notes in it. So I develop a certain flavor that I like. Growing up, I used to love, like, back in the day, the creepy things and them things. And, you know, creepy was dope. I bought yeah. a QP at Dunkin' Donuts in Daytona Beach in 05. Awesome. <laughs> so, <my laughs> <laughs> so, already, you know. so, so, but I remember one time, I remember in college, I, like, you know, I started after, you you know, before the, you start to kind of get a little bit outside of yourself and start to find people and meet people that have different strains and things. I remember tasting this one strain, man. And I, I just never forget that when I taste the herb, all the flavors, you know? But I realized it wasn't all the herbs that was like that. This time I don't know what's sativa, I don't know what is indica, you know? I'm just growing a loving herb. So I'm like, wow, I want that herb. So my entire life, I search for that, you know? And also growing up, I love this strain like um, lamb's bread. Yeah. So I get it, it was like, a, it was like, for me, it was like a pheno hunt. Like as a youth, you know, trying to find lamb's bread. And then I love Thai stick. So it was like, for me, it was like a pheno hunt all the time. When I left college, that was the thing I was trying to find. But I realized it, you know, I was like, wow, man. I remember during the COVID, I'm like, man, I need some herbs, man. I need some herbs. And I'm smoking the herb. I'm like, man, this is it? I'm like, this is what I have to deal with? So Where I'm like, were nah. you, though? Where were you when you were telling yourself that? I'm in, right, I'm in Miami. Okay. But remember, I lived in California. Don't, 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 don't trip. Don't, I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't <laughs> No, they I got know, some fire in now. I'm before off. LA. I'm 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 from the time when when Aragon was the was the one. You dig in the nineties when was when the herb was coming out of Aragon when it was coming out of LA. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So them type of hills. So I'm coming from that, you know. So in regards to America, you know, and even back in the Miami days, just you know how it is. But like I said, I just couldn't find what I wanted. So I met some brethren, my, one of my um, college buddies, uh, Mike James, who played at UM together, he played football, he, he, you know, he's out of Detroit. So he had some relationships here. And he introduced me to some guys from Heavyweight Heads, you know? And those guys, we spent about two and a half years trying to develop that taste profile, what I wanted. They would come and like this, I said, nah, 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 that ain't it. This, nah, 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 that ain't it. 
So it took me two and a half years. Well, I would say two years, from 20, well, call it two and a half, from 2020. Okay. I started to, to like get into the whole strength and this and my own thing, like to like, all right, we need to create our own movement because I don't like the herb that's out there. I want my own herb, herb I like to smoke. So those guys from Heavyweight Heads, they, you know, they helped me to develop the, these genetics here. And when they brought the, white, the right one, I knew that was the one, and, was, and we call that one King Clementine. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you guys are moving a lot of it. When we, when we pulled that one, because the, the nicest thing about herb, you see, you see when you build your spliff, first of all, the, the nicest thing is the herb itself, you know? We, we look, to, you know, that's the nicest part. But then the next part is when you grind it, you know, you, you flower it, and then you see the, the fluffiness. <laughs> and you touch it, you feel the softness. You know, when you touch it, then you put it in your paper, and then you roll it. But then when you roll it now, you seal it, and you pull it before you light it. You know, you see that pre-pull? When you pull it now, you get all those terpenes and all that flavor. That's what I love. Then when I spark that, and I'm getting that all together, I say, yeah, that's the one. So, <laughs> so, so for me, that's what we create. How long? So you found the first one, the King Clem. How yeah. long did it take you guys to find the rest of them? Well, it didn't take much longer because being that they overstood my, um, my ingredients in regards to my taste profile, it started to bring me things that are relatively in that lineage. You know, those genetics that was more fruitful, more tasty and nice. And even still, like even with our lion fuel, we still have the, the OG vibes, you know, the gassy thing, you know? Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of cross strains that kind of give us that that those nice florals, as well as even the, the THC level is very good, so. What do you say to the argument, you know, you're going uh, the personalized route with strain names. What, what do you say to the argument? Some people say it's hard to be an elite cannabis brand if you change the names, because you're not even telling the consumer what's in it. But, it's like but the mean, highest end of the market. But, but I mean, though, there's, a, there's traceability. Okay. You know, just like anything else, like, for instance, you talk about coffee. Like, coffee wasn't originated in Jamaica. Coffee don't come from Brazil. Coffee started in Ethiopia. But for coffee to get there, just by the, the, the notes of the soil, you get a different profile. But well, you can trace that, you know. You can say, oh, this bean is this, this, and the third. And you can do traceability. So if you really want to know the strains, and because you may give me something I don't like, mm -hmm. but I like something about it, but I like something about this too. So if I can create my own, um, you know, like cooking, you know, if I can cook my own dish and you like my dish, you, and you're gonna eat that, right? Yep. Then you can go there and eat his dish. But this is my Fair. dish, Fair. so this is what I like. But if you want to know the ingredient, I can tell you the ingredients. And you can look at it, bum bum bum. You can say, oh, it's this and it's that and it's that. Oh, I see how you get that. And that's so how I, many how many things did you go through over the two years on the hunt for that first one that came from? When you say when you say how many things you go did through, you, how many things did you try? How many different? Oh, things? um, let's see. Um, I don't have a number on how many things I tried, okay, actually. For sure, for sure. There's a lot of herb, though. <laughs> but then, uh, <laughs> Mike James, right? And Mike James there? Oh, he's not in there. Bless him. Yeah. So, so like that, yeah, a lot of herbs. But the, the, the key component is, you know, when they found out my taste profile, it was much easier, you know? And then the, 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 the because the smoothness, you know, and, you know, you know, the cough, I don't want you know, people think coughing is nice. I don't like the cough when I smoke my herb. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like the cough. I like, I like my smooth, mm -hmm. smooth. So it's, it's like that. So it doesn't, it, it can take, the guy might find it today or he might find it in 10 weeks, you know, so it's, it's all relative, you know. Amen. Amen. What were the main lessons you brought with you to Michigan from your past experiences in California? Well, um. In California, what do you mean California? Be more Marla specific. Mar okay, Mala Natural. So Mala Natural is a family movement, and Mala Natural is a company that was ahead of the game, right? First into the game in regards to when it became on to the license and the legalities and, and prohibition, how things were moving. So, you know, like any startup, you, have to, you go through your ups and downs, and, okay. you know, you have experiment, people try things, and, you know, 
So my, uh, what I learned from that is that when it come on to my herbs, it has to be my way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the partners have you know, learned some things and do, they're doing wonderful things. We have beautiful accessories here at Maya Natural. And we're developing the herb, you know, so herbs are development, you know. Yeah. And so it's just a really development process. But what I, what, what I am doing is being present in Michigan here and having the infrastructure because it's one thing to have a, a licensing component, but it's also one thing to have your own, you know. And I think the move to Mylars will be huge. I think one of the things about Marley Natural was those wooden tops yeah. that made the weed dry out super fast. So that, Learn, that, that no, you see, that's the thing. You see, that, those are the experimental things mm -hmm. and the learning because when you're first, when you're first in, because remember, it's and it's tricky with my family too in regards to like There's so many people. <laughs> when I, not that tricky. Tricky meaning like we move in a sustainable way. Okay. So what's tricky is is like to work with us. You have to develop. Uh, in, you have to have ingenuity and be able to create things that are fall within the family guidelines of the sustainable movement you know so so we went into wood and learned that because obviously you know herb as a consumable it takes a time to get to the get to you the, the uh, consumer mm -hmm. and you know you have to go to the wholesale then the journey then the travel then this so the, the shelf life has to be preserved a certain way in order to maintain that freshness. So Obviously. it's not that the herb is not good, it's just the, the way to procure it and the way to give it a shelf life is some of the things that we have learned how to really make it, make it become more sustainable in regards to the herbs. What are the biggest differences you found uh, with this launch in Michigan compared to the other stuff? Well, um, this one is my thing. Yeah, for this sure. This is uh, um, just my way all the way. Like, just <laughs> just no meeting of the minds, <laughs> just one. <laughs> no, no, not, no, no, not really meeting of the minds. Just, just my way, you know, like yeah. Rastafari thing. It's not, not, nothing different with my, my family thing, the same thing. But it's, it's one thing, because I do both, you know. I'm, I represent my family. So this one is just... Uh, you know, like how you, you, you know, what are you drinking? Coca-Cola? Yeah, zero. But what else do they have with Coca-Cola? They have Sprite. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. We have more natural, we have lime so, so we just have to, when I get, when, when we finish setting up this one, I'll put some attention to. What's it been like watching, because you know, 15 years ago, yeah. I don't think indoor cannabis would have been sustainable enough to for you to do this, you know what but I mean? But guess what the problem What's is? What's it been like watching the technology get to this point? That's where you the thing, because I was one of those guys where I only smoke outdoor yeah. and thing, but smoking outdoor, it, it, you, you find out that the elements yeah, can yeah, defeat you. Yeah, a lot know? more waxes and lipids, the, and if you want to smoke the, smooth, the that's elements, not it. The yeah. elements defeat you. And so you have to come up with mythology and along the way, just like oh, when in, in, like, in time, plastic was a thing, you know? And then people decide on how to become more sustainable and find other ways to to create things without using plastic. So it's just like herb. So how can we make the herb to, to maintain its essence, but we can't control rain, we can't control wind, we can't control sun and, and plant, just like any other greenhouse. So it's really just a high-tech greenhouse, you know? Controlling the light system, how, what time the plants eat, how much light the plant need to maintain that level to sustain, you know, like, so, because, like, you're drinking that thing over there, I'm sure when you go into this other place, you drink, it tastes the same. Yeah. But there's a, there's a process to do that. It's like anything else. So, if, if it's just some backyard thing, it's for, if, just, if it's just for my own liking, yeah, I'll smoke the sun. I'll, I'll smoke the sun growing, but I have to smoke it. I have to search all over the world to find the right guy, and who, and then, I travel and the guys in Jamaica, then I can't get that herb. So I just had to find a place where I can maintain <laughs> maintain the herb I need to smoke. And that's right here. Amen. Amen. Uh, what's it been like watching the flake? There's so many more flavors than there used to be. Was part of the, the issue that like just in that new widespread of flavors, it yeah. was harder to find those things that you like loved in the past and pull them yeah, out? Yeah, true. And that was the whole thing. Is how do I find that, you know? Yeah. 
and I'm telling you, man, King Clam Island Sunshine, the road block, and all our strains because coming from I and I own <laughs> taste, it is it, you know. And that was the key to find that. And I and I really found that when I taste the herb. <laughs> so how like, how rapidly do you want to like t scale this up? Are you more worried uh, about execution first and not even thinking about that? What's yeah, not, yeah, what you, yeah, what's yeah, your yeah, plan yeah. right now? The, the the plan is to be able to maintain the level of superiority in regards to the flower and and taking the baby steps and doing the right way. As you know, last year when we we had a pre-launch, I call it, I wouldn't say a pre-launch, but we had a soft launch. When we, when we introduced our genetics to the marketplace, and that was through heavyweight heads, you know? And then but we realized that to maintain uh, an infrastructure of business, to be able to last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, we need an infrastructure. And so I met some great human beings while I was in Miami, as you know, the name Three or Five Farms, and speaking to like Jan Valor and his idea of how he sees business like infrastructure and how to operate operation you know you got this is what we do this is an operation you gotta the guy is gonna come and this guy is gonna go to the dispensary then the guy's gonna take this they gotta follow the laws and like but so to under, to, to to find someone that understand that the philosophy of business in the manner that i want to do business mm -hmm. and the way that i can come here and understand that we have a system the number one system in michigan here like uh, this place, <laughs> we provide ele electricity. See that there? That's a repayment of the electricity that we give to the community here. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so it's a entirely it's a sustainable movement. It's a sustainable mind concept. So people like that I love to be with because they understand that it's greater than just the selling herb, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's about the infrastructure and the baby steps and having the, the capacity to do it in regards to I can't keep Island Sunshine on the shelf. Now it's so good that people want it, I can't keep it, so I have to be able to provide that and not just, you know how it is, oh man, we went here, we couldn't find it. Then people just like, oh man, lose interest. So, you know, like anything else, you want to maintain your credibility and you want to keep your standards high. You know, so we're working with people that overstand that type of journey and what we represent as Rastafari people when it comes out to Earth. Because herb is a sacrament to us, even though it's, even though there's a consumer side of it, but there's always a balance, the material and the spiritual. As a Rastafari, how wild is it over the past ten years? Essentially, being legal, getting legal to pray, it's getting legal to pray everywhere. And yeah. Just in your eyes, right? Yeah. So what's that like to watch? You it's know, be it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Legal, like Peter Taz, legalize it. So it's like it was, it's always been the movement. It's always been that move to free the herbs. You know, it's, uh, it's beautiful, As and we can. love it, because, you know, it's different, man, when you're driving down the street, you know, and the policeman is behind you, you don't panic, you know, <laughs> like, you have a little herb, you're good. You know, like, it's like, you know, because people used to, people create, create a lot of anxiety over herb, but it's not really the herb that gives you anxiety, it's the, the it's thoughts. The consequences. <laughs> 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 thoughts of the consequences so when you when you're able to alleviate that it's wonderful so we're very happy about the movement we're a part of that movement we're you know we're entrepreneurs we're young in the uh, in regards to the cannabis business we're young we're a new entity we're a new startup but we've been smoking up since we were seven years old <laughs> so it's only right <laughs> It's only right that take what's mine. <laughs> so you, so you this were, is ours. You were an entrepreneur for a long time before sure. you stepped into this space. Sure. What was the moment that it's like, okay, this feels safe to do now? When the when the government said it was so. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a child, you know, you try to dip and dabble around the earth. Hey, what? All right. In high school, you know. All right. Grandma, I have some herb. Take two bag of grandma herb. I give it to you for ten dollars. <laughs> take a little bit of grandma herb and ten dollars. You know, take it. <laughs> you know, so we're very, very happy that today it's now like not, not more like the the stigma 
to herb. It's not like, oh, it's no negativity to it now. It's not like when I go to the airport, oh, I love your perfume. <laughs> it's like, huh, what perfume are you talking mm -hmm. about? You know? So it's more easy to flow. It's a, it's a better life because herb is a part of our life. So it's just better life, you know, it's just make life much easier to live. What was the design inspiration? Uh, I, I like the portrait style. I like the, like the, the, it's a cool finish on it, you know? Pull up this chair, my brother. Oh, oh there we go. Excellent. Perfect. So, <laughs> so uh, what shirt you, oh, refer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, when, when, when we started this thing, you know, the vision for, the, for our packaging and this the thing that you see, it's all right, you know, growing up as a Rasta youth, and you know, you know, obviously the household, the, the way we saw the, the, the hygiene's move herb, you know, from the Coptic time and, and the way this herb was like a, a life substance to put these kids through school, to do this and that, it was a, it was a, it's a movement. So when I when I I'm inspired by that movement, you know, and that today that we can do it legally. Because if you know that movie, uh, Grouper, what's it called? Square Grouper. S Square Grouper. Square Grouper. He just passed away. Right, lost the Robert. Right. So so, you understand. So I'm that. I come from. I'm that. The, I'm the manifestation of that today in that world. So I wanted to tell that with art. And I wanted to tell this whole journey bit of of Jamaica, the Caribbean culture and what we represent for canvas. And this brethren came to my house, he brought a picture of my dad, a huge portrait of my father, he gave to me as a gift. And I'm talking to the team, and I'm like, yo, I, I, I need this to be a certain way, a certain feel. And I'm talking, but I'm looking at the, the portrait, and I'm like, wow, that is it. I said, you know what? Voodoo, come to my house, man. I need to talk to you. Who? Vo Voodoo comes to the house. I say, listen, I have, an, I have a concept, man. And I think he can do it. <laughs> I need to create Dreddy, who is the herb farmer. <laughs> and I need to put Dreddy in the hills. And while you have Dreddy in the hills, I need to see the plane, the, the ganjas the ganja plane flying over to pick up Jenny's herb. So we call that one island sunshine. There you go. When you smoke that, you get the island sunshine. Voodoo yes, was able to, to articulate that inspiration and bring that to life. Yeah, yeah they all look fantastic. Uh, they're very, and very then, refreshing. So this one is considered roadblock. So roadblock... <laughs> <laughs> Road, Simple story. Roadblock is an inspiration of just being in Jamaica and the herb man them, the policeman them, always blocking them freaking road. <laughs> so they block the road. But but Rastaman, because it's our livelihood, it's our way of life, Dreddy, he got it all he got to always talk his way out of it. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> we didn't give a little money, but he keep, he got to keep the herb, you know? <laughs> so Dreddy, which is Roblox, this is the, uh, a consideration to Dreddy reasoning with the police officer to let him go through the roadblock. <laughs> so that's Dreddy. And then you from Dreddy, now, now you have King Clementine. Why King Clementine? When I was talking to Aaron, I said, Aaron, tell me about the notes of King Clement. I need to know the notes. He said, you know, it's kind of citrusy and blase, blase. I said, yeah. Voodoo, I need to put dreads on Selassie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th this is actually myself. Oh, touche. <laughs> but, but I, I like, like, that, I like port, that old portrait. I like it. <laughs> it's what it's from. It's an Ethiopian thing. Oh, yeah, at least it wasn't an offensive thing to say, right? That's <laughs> a good thing to say. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't feel good. You say that. <laughs> Bless it. It's beautiful. So I was saying, King Clementine. So I was like, what's the, what's the notes of King Clementine? Oh yeah, it's kind of citrusy and blase, blase. I said, Rastafari. I said, well, you know, in Jamaica, we have Orange Street. <laughs> and Orange Street is where my dad started his first record uh, shop. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna use Orange Street and start my first cannabis shop. 
And who's going to run the cannabis? Who's going to be the king of cannabis? King Clementine. So King Clementine is who runs the record shop in Kingston. So we created King Clementine. And then we have her. Yeah, that one's sick. <laughs> she, well, obviously, when we talk about herb, if we don't mention her, it doesn't then exist. There's no vibes. There's no vibes. <laughs> <laughs> So it's really a Herbie. It's Herb. Herbie. You like that? Herbie. It's Herb, bro. <laughs> so now she, she's the boss lady. She's queen, queen Kushite, from the Kushite Empire. So <laughs> as you notice, we choose to call her Gully Kush. Why? Because in Jamaica, you have this thing called a gully. And the gully separates the rich people and the poor people in better terms. And the gully is a gutter. I throw trash there. Well, Queen Kushite from the Kush Empire decided to ride her lion into that gully and made the gully a greenhouse. She made the gully her grow. So both sides of the community now smokes Queen Gully Kush, Gully Kush right there. So they're all intermingling because it was a queen. <laughs> so it's queen, she's the queen from the Kushite Empire. And now we have this one called Lion Fuel. As, as you notice, it's Dreddy and the queen. So Dreddy has to transport his herb from that side to come to this side where she's in Kingston, you know? So this is the street of Kingston when Queen, Queen Kushai linked up with Dreddy because he had to bring the herb to her for her to distribute it to the community. <laughs> so that's them linking up right there. Yeah. And this one, we call it the hurricane. And as you know, we're in Michigan, where it's okay. <laughs> I'm a University of Miami Hurricane football player. So this is in tribute to that. And being that we are the kings it, it, it was only just to put the number two and the land are the king on the was it, hard, <laughs> was it hard to smoke as much weed as you wanted to when you were uh, on the team? I mean, all right, I got to tell you a funny story. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, real, real, real quick, we got time for two more questions all after right. this. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't get a time limit, so I just kept going. <laughs> all, right, all, right. all right, there's two more questions, then. all right. Funny story. One day, um, my friend, one of my teammates and I, I, dis I discovered that every time they leave the, the campus, they get into their cars and they take their shirts off. And they put their shirts in the trunk. And they go away and they come back. So when they come to the dorm room, I'm like, I'm like, y'all smoke herb? <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, we smoke. I say, really? I smoke. <laughs> I said, let's go somewhere. So we would now, when we had practice, in between practice, go to my grandmother's house and we burn the herbs. <laughs> so, and then we put our shirts in the car. So the funny story to that, we talk about the problems. <laughs> Every time we walk into the meeting room, I'm, we're always late. Like, my guy, he's bigger than I am. And we walk in. So everyone, they laugh. Ha, 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 ha. So I'm thinking that they're laughing because it's, it's she and I. But they're laughing because we stink of herb. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't find out till later on, many years later, that putting your shirt in the back does not make <laughs> That's like herb. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you have another question? No, you, I'm good. I'm, right I'm, I'm awesome. You have a question, right? Yeah, so, uh, but well, you can always sit here and ask whatever. Yeah, There's yeah, a common, yeah. we have a reason in there. Yeah, yeah. uh, what attracted you to Michigan? You could have chose California, Colorado. What made you want to choose Michigan? Well, my phone number is 248. In uh, 2009, eight, when I came from Ethiopia and I decided to create Mali Coffee. 
my family, I told my family it's time, you know, I represent the family in many, many aspects. And it was time to really um, build the, the family movement outside of my dad's like license, like Bob Marley name and stuff. So we started to create like Marley Coffee, the House of Marley. So when we, when we decided to develop House of Marley, one of the partners from House of Marley lives here. And he lives on Pontiac Trail here. And he's from Homedics, a company called Homedics. So I started coming to Michigan. And from them times, but wherever I go, you know, they have to give me the herb. So, <laughs> so I come to Michigan, and in 2009, 10, 11, 11, Michigan started to like, Michigan was one of the first places to like, oh, you can get her, oh, oh yeah, you can get herb here. Herb, like there was like dispensaries, but not dispensaries. So Michigan was like that, and we created the House of Marley here, Marley Beverage. Um, my, my, uh, my entrepreneurial life, my business teachers, the guys that taught me how to really become an entrepreneur in business came from here in Michigan. So Michigan is a part of my life, and we just so be it that uh, Mike James, who played for Detroit Lions, relationships here in Michigan, and just being able to bring myself in the cannabis game to Michigan because of those relationships, even though I already have a two for number. So it was just natural. Any last question before we uh, we're gonna head down to the show? Yeah, so Woo! we can smoke some herbs. <laughs> yeah, we can we can talk more and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can talk more. We're going down there. Yeah. yeah.